Four surprisingly simple things to dropping body fat. After spending over a decade coaching busy humans to get their body and energy back on their side, I keep coming back to these four things. And in this video, I wanna walk you through what those four things are, how easy they are to install, and really just give you an awareness of it's not just what you eat, it's how you eat. And this is a phrase that we use all the time inside of our world because in a world where there's so much noise and so much information about what to do to get in shape and what new superfood or super drug do you need to take, we completely forget how our body actually operates. And inside Body Reset, we're a really big fan and promoter of how much everything works together. We're looking at our digestive health, we're looking at our physical health and movement, and then we're looking at our psychological health and how we move and think and how we think about moving and how we think about eating and all these other aspects that make a drastic impact on how our body operates. And when we do, you actually have so much more power over how your body works. So we're going to walk you through these four, show you the simple stuff because nothing fancy works unless you nail the basics. So the first one I want to look at is water away from meals. This is a really interesting one because for a lot of us, certainly if we eat out a lot, we're dining out, we're entertaining, there's a lot of work functions or family functions. It's really easy to get into that space where we're always having majority of our water around meals because we're at a restaurant or we're just rushed throughout our day. We forget about eating. So when we get to finally sitting down to eat, we get all that water in as well. The trouble with this is that we're flushing all of that water down. So there's a couple other issues we'll dive into in a second, but it actually dilutes that stomach acid and being able to break food down requires a, a good amount of acidity in our stomach to effectively break things down. So as a very simplified version of this, if you do notice that you have a lot more bloating after a meal, you just feel a bit sluggish. If you've had too much water of that meal, it's at least a first step to look at. Being able to keep you know, there's no hard and fast number on this, but generally 20 minutes, 20 or 30 minutes between a good amount of water and your main meal, having a glass of water with a meal is not going to be the end of the world. But if you're trying to aim for two, three, four liters of water a day, which if you're anywhere between sort of 80 to 120 kilos should be a goal, by the way, a little metric here is about 30 mils per kilo of body weight should be about how much water you should be drinking in the day. I'm just under 100 kilos, so I'm going to have roughly around three liters a day at a minimum. If it's really hot or I'm exercising on top, then I'm going to probably increase that water intake. But for me, I'm going to have majority of that water first thing when I wake up, around my workouts, and away from meals. So that's maybe even a bonus target for you as well. But just really that awareness of keeping water away from meals allows you to extract the nutrients out of food, not struggle to break that food down, and probably not be nearly as bloated from that meal. So that's number one. The second one is uh, very much ties into this, is chewing your food. And this, again, super simple. I promised it'd be simple, but it gives a drastic impact to the quality of your digestive tract. If you don't chew in your mouth, there's no teeth anywhere else, and it requires so much more effort from your stomach to break that food down and churn through these big clumps of unchewed food if you haven't done the work up top. So taking the time, and there's lots of studies around how many times you should chew, somewhere between 20, 25, 30 chews per mouthful, but I've never counted how many times I chew in my life, and I don't intend to. I think just taking the time to put your fork and knife down in between each mouthful so you're not inhaling food down is going to make a really big impact. And if you're not flushing water down with lots of water, well, that just makes it so much easier. So chewing your food around meals, you can do everything to improve your gut, but if you're not chewing, everything's going to feel heavy in your stomach. The third one here, and this is a really, really important one, certainly when it comes to fat loss and busy humans, is stop skipping meals. I am a fan of fasting in short periods of time on a weekly or a monthly basis or a particular period of time that we're doing it, but simply skipping meals and saying I'm fasting or running throughout the day and just forgetting to eat is a a big part of why we tend to have sluggish metabolisms, we tend to overeat later in the day. Uh, I heard a beautiful quote the other day, which is the symptom of overeating or the reason for overeating is undereating, right? If we're undereating through our day, it's much easier to binge at the end of the day or end of week because we've just rushed our way through the week. The way to effectively drop body fat is strategically fueling that change, not just trying to starve it or skip meals or find those deficits where they're possible because your body is smart. It's always going to adjust to what's it, what it's taking in. And if you're running around stressed and under fuel, your body's going to downregulate that metabolism. And instead of dropping body fat, unfortunately, you start to break down muscle tissue. You start to really suppress overall hormonal and immune function. And there's a lot of other things go wrong. So really having three to four key meals in your day usually becomes a recommendation for most of us. And if you're anywhere beyond sort of 40, 45, and you're looking to drop body fat, you're looking to regulate your overall performance through the day, 
I generally wouldn't recommend anything beyond a 14 hour fast on a day to day basis, right? There's going to be exceptions to that rule, but they tend to be a lot more well muscled or lean individuals already. But for the most part, our clients tend to see the best results between a 10 and 14 hour fast. We all fast, it just depends to what degree is helpful, right? So we fast hopefully throughout the entire night, and then we go the, the you know, that's hopefully eight hours. 10, 12, 14. Where's your sweet spot? Find that for you and try not to skip too many of those meals throughout the day. If we're trying to improve our metabolic health, this becomes really effective. If you're listening to people that already are very metabolically helpful, they have hormonal support or they're already well muscled, then fasting can be much more effective. So it just gives you that nuance of why is this not working or what? who should I listen to? And the last one and probably the most important one in regards to how I approach gut health and overall digestion is five deep breaths before a meal. This gives you a really nice insight into how that body works together rather than it just being gut health being a probiotic or something you take. It's the awareness of how it responds to the outside world or responds to your body as a whole. When you're in a stressed state, majority of that blood is pulled towards those limbs, arms, legs, and that fight or flight response, right? Sorry, you got the blood in those muscles, it's easier to run away, which means it's pulling that blood away from somewhere else, which is your digestive tract, right? And that's where you start to notice if you've eaten a meal in a rush or you're being stressed or angry or just got out of an argument or a meeting, that food just feels like it sits there and you never really digest it. And being able to take those five deep breaths is enough time to check in with yourself bring down that blood pressure and really switch your body back into that parasympathetic response. In that position where we're rest and digest state, we're bringing that blood or a percentage of that blood back around our digestive tract so that we can break down those nutrients properly and make sure we're actually absorbing those foods. So although simple, and that was the promise of this training, five deep breaths is a really powerful way to improve your overall digestive tract. If you pair that alongside with keeping majority of your water away from meals, you're taking the time to actually chew your food and keep those utensils down for a little bit, and also not skipping these meals throughout the day, but having structured times where possible to eat and be conscious of how you're eating, you've now massively improved your digestive tract, your ability to extract nutrients from that food, and your ability to drop body fat by having a healthy metabolic rate and overall cellular function. So I'd love to know which one of those in the chat you are most interested or interested in trying or found unexpected, because these are ones that as a health coach, I come back to time and time again. You can do the fancy tests, you can do the amazing workouts, but if you're not nailing the ability to regulate how your body works, how you're breaking down food, you're missing a massive opportunity to how to get your body back to 100%. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to go deeper into this, you want to get an awareness of how we start to integrate this digestive, physical, and psychological health, if you're on our podcast or YouTube, there'll be a link in the description below to go through our Body Reset Blueprint. If you're in our Facebook group, I'll drop that link below as well. But giving you an awareness of these simple habits are fundamentally what makes health last long term because you're in tune with your body, not just expecting an external food or supplement or something to do the work. Manage your body, manage your state, and your body will work much, much better. See ya.